Hello friends. Good morning. Today we are going to see the 11th session. We have completed 10 sessions of the video lecture series on learning disability. So we are now going to see what are the simple steps to improve the spelling. When we say that a child has got learning difficulty or disability, the child will have problems in all of these things, in memory, in discrimination, okay, and in uh, uh, um, attention, and then in spelling. So most of the time, the teachers basically identify that the child has got a learning disability basically from the spelling only, because gross spelling mistakes would be there, reversals would be there. So this is actually a very clear sign uh, to say that a child, that this child has got a learning disability. But you see, we cannot just leave it like that. We have to teach the child in a very interesting manner, in a simple manner, not to complicate, not like others. Okay, and we have to teach them so that they improve in their spelling. So that is important. Otherwise, every time they write, if there are a lot of spelling mistakes, first of all, their notebook would be filled with the readings. So that itself they will feel very bad to see, okay, and uh, they, they, I mean, they, they feel uh, their self-esteem goes down a lot. And this notebook when they are showing it to their parents, you know what happens, the parents will say, oh my god, what is all this, it's all red, how many mistakes you are making, don't you know how to write properly. So every time, whenever they open the notebook, it's because of the red ink and uh, all those things. Or generally, you know, I mean, they get a lot of scoldings and ridiculing and insults and which really affects their morale and their self-esteem. So, therefore, improving spelling more than uh, helping them to write, it really helps them to boost up their self-confidence and self-esteem. So, therefore, we really have to work on this area, okay. In this context, I would like to say, the teachers, when they really know that this child has got some learning difficulty, disability, can actually use a different pen, maybe a, a blue pen itself for correction. Uh, so that that red mark will not be seen very gra drastically. Maybe you can just round it and circle it and not make it too, uh, you know, you know, scribble on the thing so much. Some teachers are like, you know, they just like that. They big, put a big circle and then they put a big in wrong. And all these things, see the smaller um, uh, cross mark means less impact. The bigger cross mark means it has got a greater impact. So the teachers have to really understand how these each and every of these things affect the morale of the children. And therefore, they have to actually, you know, take some, the, some of these smaller uh, steps to see to it that, you know, the correction part, when they open the notebook, they should not feel so bad. Okay, so that is number one. Okay, now two methods only I'm going to share in this improving the spelling. The first method is called phonic method. Phonic method is nothing but phonetics. You know what is phonetics? Phonetics means the study of the sound. See, in Montessori uh, uh, schools and uh, uh, for Montessori sections and all, they teach phonetics right from the beginning. But not all schools teach phonetics. But I think uh, parents and teachers can actually, uh, you know, uh, I mean, teach this and start, uh, I mean, learning what is phonetics and teach them because it helps them uh, to get the spelling very fast or to grasp the, the spelling very fast rather than the usual method. That is really confusing. That is not confusing for the normal kids, but that is really confusing for the kids with learning disability. So therefore, phonic method really helps them because they, they go with the sound. So here I would like to, I'm not going to teach phonetics over here, but a small description about, uh, I mean, how does it really help? See, sound helps in decoding of the words. See, they, they hear the sound and then they decode them into words. And then they write it. So th thus they get the correct spelling, almost the correct spelling at least. Okay, so it is said that there are uh, three parts in every alphabet. Now let us take, um, see every language has got phonetics. Now let's focus on English itself. Now there are three parts of a letter. Okay, for example, if you, if I say A, okay. Now when I write this A, this diagram, no, this is the picture. This is how the image of that particular letter. This is the image. So image or the picture is one part of the letter. And the second one is every letter has got a name. Every letter has like how we all have a name like that. Every letter has got a name. And what is that name? This picture 
the name is A. That's all. And that every uh, name, every letter has got a sound. And therefore, this picture, this image, which has got a name called A, has a sound called A. So that is it. So that is called phonetics. So the sound is different. It has got a name and name doesn't have any value at all. The sound has got so much of value because it helps them to decode into words and help them to write it. And the picture is something we need to know. What does, you know, when they hear the sound, they'll have to visualize the picture of that uh, letter and then they'll have to write it. So that is how the picture, that is the image and the sound has got a greater impact. But the name is just a name. We say A, B, C, D, E like that. Okay. Now, if you want to know more about uh, uh, what is phonetics, yes, definitely I feel each and every teacher, especially the primary school teacher and the parents also should know something about phonetics because it helps the children for learning very fast. Okay. And I would recommend um, a YouTube um, channel called as um, English with J, J-A-Y, English with J. Okay. The title of the video is Full A to Z Phonic Sounds for Reference very short video so what is the image and what is the name of the letter and what is the sound of the letter for all 26 letters it is given very easy for you so once you know that then right from the beginning you can teach the kids tell you now if the child is the child knows what are the sounds for each letter now i'm asking the child to write the spelling of uh, cat cat so i'm 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 giving the sound the child listens to the sound ka so this is k, a, and this is a, and uh, t, and this is t. So based on the sound, the child is able to just follow the sound and write the image of that sound, and therefore the spelling comes perfect. Okay, so it is it really helps a lot. Uh, so I think we can really get into this method if we want to really teach the kids right from the beginning. Okay, now the second method is called as visualization method. The visualization method is, it is a simple method wherein a word is written on the board. Again, we can say cat, um, classroom or whatever. Uh, uh, words are written on the board and a child is asked to look. Okay. And once the child looks the, at the words and then we have to ask the child to close the eyes. Okay. And the letters are spelled. So I'm telling C A T. Suppose the child doesn't know phonetics, then we'll have to go with the old method itself. So I'm telling the name of the letter, not the sound of the letter, but the name of the letter. C A T. Now the child here is connecting the name and the image. Okay, now the child has already seen the image and the letters are spelled C A T. Okay, and the child is asked to visualize the position of the letters and uh, asked, and then I now I'll say, uh, I mean, where does C come? Does it come first or second or third? And the child will say it comes first. Or, and where does A come? It comes second. Because the child is remembering what it has seen on the board. C, A, T. So we are training the child to see where, I mean, if the child knows the positioning of the letters. So we are asking the child again and again. Suppose the child makes a mistake. We say, okay, now open your eyes. Look at it once again. See where the positioning are. Now close your eyes. I'll tell once again. Now tell me correctly. So like that we can go from simple words to complex words. And then every time we'll have to, what we have to do is, we'll have to note down the errors or the kind of mistakes that the child is making. Now this is a simple method. We are asking the child to tell the positioning of the words. The next level is what we can do is, write something on the board, ask the child to see and ask the child to close the eyes, okay? And ask the child to maybe tell and then ask the child to write. So again, the child gets the habit of writing and how the child is writing. Whether the child is writing correctly, remembering the positioning of the words. So here memory is also increasing and the spelling is also increasing. But you know, the rule of the game for any kind of thing is that practice. And it must be a consistent one. See, today you do and after one week you do, then it will not work out. So you'll have to literally keep a schedule that this is the time for spelling and everything should be like a game. This I'm repeatedly telling again and again because the children because of their learning disability are already disinterested in studies. 
Now, if you tax them all the more, they'll just run away. They will not cooperate. And you will not be able to teach them. They, are, they will not be able to come out. So we'll have to make it as interesting as possible, as creative as possible, like a game. And we'll have to schedule it every day. And we'll have to first continuously, I mean, give them practice. So these are the things that the teachers and the parents have to do. This is where I say that more than depending on the teachers, because the teachers have to take care of many children. If they're going to just focus on them, it will take their whole lot of time. So it is the, the sole uh, responsibility and the thing comes on the parents because it is your children and you've got only one or two kids and children with learning disability, maybe just one. So you really have to give your time for all these things. Okay. Now, the final thing is that once you teach the child how the positioning is and once the child is writing, we love to, uh, as I told you, we love to note down the type of errors. So I would like to tell what are the different types of errors that basically children make um, in, in spelling. Okay. One is letter additions. They add one letter. Okay. For example, uh, for T-H-I-N-K, think. Okay, they may be writing T H I I N K. One I is added. Okay, one letter is added. So letter additions may be there. So that we'll have to see. Is the child continuously doing letter additions? So we'll have to, you know, it's a kind of monitoring and analyzing the type of errors so that we can correct them accordingly. Then we have letter omissions. Rather than adding one letter, they omit a letter while they are writing. For example, for black, B L A C K, they may write. B L A K. This may be the letter omissions. And the third one is letter reversals, very common one, which is like uh, 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 instead of writing dog, they write bog. Instead of D, they write B. So that may be there. Or instead of writing past, they write cast, Q. Instead of P, they write Q. Uh, you understood? So that is letter reversals. And then sequencing errors. For example, Instead of, um, you know, writing friend, F-R-I-E-N-D, see here, this is something that I generally make, I always have doubt, you know, what is friend, where does I comes before or E comes before, so some, some, some things are there with us always, okay, so no matter, no, why should we blame them, but this is one error that they have, sequencing error, friend, F-R-I-E-N-D is the correct uh, spelling, they might write F-R-E-I-N-D, so the sequencing may vary. Sometimes they may write, uh, for past, they write PATS. P-A-S-T, they write P-A-T-S. So sequencing errors may be there. So that we'll have to teach them. See, this is what your, this is your problem. This is the way you're making mistake. Otherwise, you're fine. So then the child also will be conscious about whether the child is writing, positioning the words correctly. And then the last kind of error is substitution. Substitution means like, uh, instead of a letter, they write some other letter. For example, uh, the, the correct letter is nice, N-I-C-E, they write N-I-S-E, N-I-S-E, because the, for them, the sound is the same. And then true for true, for example, T-R-U-E is the correct word and they write T-R-O-O maybe, because listening to that, right? So that is substitution. So the letter additions or omissions or reversals or sequencing or substitution. So you'll have to actually categorize all these things and make a note of it so that you can really help the child to improve on each of these areas. So I hope this video was useful, but everything will be useful only when you really understand and take interest to do it regularly for the children. Okay, thank you and God bless.